Picture this, the Nevada desert, a vast sun-baked expanse, where the world's best pilots come to play war, it's the famous red flag exercise, top-tier aerial combat training. On one side, the might of the United States Air Force, their legendary F-16S the Vipers, pilots with thousands of hours, backed by a military budget bigger than most countries' economies. On the other side, a handful of pilots from neutral Sweden, flying a jet that looked small, the Saab Gripen. What happened next shocked the Pentagon, the little Swedish jet didn't just survive, it dominated. In simulated dogfights, the Gripen with clever electronics and a nimble frame dancing around American fighters, one Gripen pilot reportedly scored 10 kills in a single week against top-tier opponents including a kill on an F-16 Charlie Juliet Wild Weasel. This wasn't supposed to happen. The pecking order of the skies was being rewritten. A fighter built for efficiency and cunning, not brute force. To understand the Gripen, you have to understand Sweden during the Cold War. Imagine being a relatively small neutral country sharing a border across the Baltic Sea with the colossal expansionist Soviet Union. You're not in NATO, you're not in the Warsaw Pact, you're on your own. If the tanks started rolling west, you would be the first line of defense, and no one was coming to help you on day one. This existential threat forged a unique military doctrine. It wasn't about projecting power across the globe, it was about making an invasion of Sweden so difficult, so costly and so painful that no one would dare try it. It was the porcupine strategy, don't look for a fight, this philosophy directly shaped the aircraft that came before the Gripen. Saab, the Swedish aerospace giant, had a history of building brilliant, unconventional jets. There was the Draken, then the Viggen, a beast that could use ordinary roads as runways, designed to be refueled and rearmed by a small team in under 10 minutes, components of a decentralized defense system. When it came time to replace the Viggen, the requirements were daunting. The new jet had to be faster, more agile, and able to perform air-to-air, -air, ground attack and reconnaissance in one sortie. It had to be easy to maintain and cheap to operate, and nothing on the market fit, so they built their own. So, what makes the Gripen so special? It's not about having the biggest engine or the most missiles, it's about balance. It's about being clever. First look at its design, it has a delta wing, great for high-speed flight, and it also carries lots of fuel and weapons. Delta wings can be sluggish in a tight turn. Saab fixed that with canards, little wings near the cockpit. The canards create a vortex over the main wing. That vortex gives the jet incredible agility at high speeds, and at low speeds too. The combo makes the grip and supremely maneuverable. It can point its nose where the pilot wants very, very quickly. Think lorry versus sports car on a roundabout. But the real magic is on the inside. Gripen was one of the first jets built around software. Less plane with a computer, more flying supercomputer with wings. Its avionics are fully integrated. The pilot gets a clear, simple picture of a complex battlefield. Information from radar, from infrared sensors, and from its unique data link is fused onto a few large, easy-to-read screens. That data link is a game-changer. Gripens can share info silently and securely. Software focus brings another benefit. Upgrades. Often the Gripen just needs a software update, like updating apps on your phone. Keeps the Gripen cutting edge without breaking the bank. Tough, easy to live with, and with a small logistical footprint. The 2006 red flag exercise in Nevada wasn't a one-off. The Gripen has consistently punched above its weight, leaving advanced air forces scratching their heads. In exercise after exercise, the Swedish jet showed a unique blend of agility, advanced electronic warfare and low observable features that make it a nightmare in simulated combat. One of its party tricks is the electronic warfare suite. It's not stealth like an F-22 designed to be invisible to all radar. Instead the Gripen is like a chameleon, confusing and jamming enemy radar creating a bubble of electronic chaos. At Loyal Arrow in 2009, Gripen capabilities were on full display. Blue Force, Swedish Greppens, Red, a mix of top place fighters supported by NATO AWACS, yet the result was often stunningly one sided. Gripen's integrated EW and data link let the Blue Force coordinate with devastating efficiency. Red simply couldn't get a clean radar lock. In joint exercises, even massive twin engine dogfighters like the Su 30 MKI faced surprising resistance. In within visual range sims the Gripen often came out on top. Superior situational awareness, rapid turn rate and network tactics gave Gripen pilots the edge. Brain over brawn. These encounters built a formidable reputation. It wasn't just winning dogfights, it was disrupting the enemy's battle plan. If you want a classic head-to-head, -head, 
it has to be the Gripen versus the F-16 Fighting Falcon. The F-16 is, without a doubt, one of the most successful fighter jets in history. It's the Ford Fiesta of the fighter world. Brilliant, affordable, reliable. Over 4,600 built, backbone of dozens of air forces. Two approaches, the F-16, evolutionary, the Gripen, revolutionary, needs-based. In raw performance they can be closely matched, but the Gripen often has the edge in agility thanks to its canard delta layout. Where the Gripen pulls ahead, especially the Gripen E, is its electronic brain, sensor fusion, and a modern data link, a generation ahead of most F-16S currently in service. Estimates place Gripen's cost per flight hour at a fraction of the F-16s, some figures suggest less than half. For a small nation that's colossal, the same money buys more flight hours, better trained pilots, and a more credible air force. It's like choosing between a trusted defender and a modern efficient forester. Both have places, but one fits most missions better. For many countries, the Gripen just makes more sense. It's the smart buy, comparable performance, far more advanced electronically, and dramatically cheaper to operate. The Gripen is the clever challenger, offering capability and sustainability in one package. Now for a heavyweight comparison, the Gripen versus the Eurofighter Typhoon. The Gripen versus the Eurofighter Typhoon, the Typhoon is a beast, a European mega-project, built by the UK, Germany, Italy and Spain. Twin massive engines, blistering top speed, rocket-like climb and heavy payload capacity, formidable in beyond visual range engagements. On paper, this looks like a mismatch. Twin-engine Typhoon has raw thrust, climb, payload and supercruise, but air combat is rarely a straight drag race. The Gripen is smaller, lighter and far more nimble in close quarters dogfights. Classic trade-off, a broadsword versus a rapier. Typhoon has powerful radar and advanced systems. Gripen E brings ESA radar and network-centric design, focus on situational awareness and EW. Typhoon is expensive to buy and operate. Gripen's lower running costs are the trump card. A country can buy and operate a much larger Gripen fleet for the same price, more planes in the air, more pilot hours, more resilience. For procurement decisions effectiveness per budget often matters more than one-on-one -on -one supremacy. The Typhoon is a thoroughbred, but the Gripen is the pragmatic sustainable winner for many nations. So why have countries like Czech Republic, Hungary, South Africa, Thailand, Brazil? They looked at American, Russian and European jets, and picked the Gripen. The answer isn't just performance or agility, it's economics, politics and practicality. A complex cocktail, economics, politics and practicality. For many nations the Gripen hits the sweet spot. This includes fuel, maintenance, spare parts, and personnel training. Saab has been smart, selling planes with partnership, tech transfer and industrial participation, especially with Brazil. Brazil gained production roles and knowledge, not just hardware. The Gripen is easy to fly, easy to maintain, easy to deploy. Operate with a small ground crew from austere locations, a real capability for many nations, a complete system designed for efficiency and effectiveness in the real world. That's why the smart money often lands on the Griffin. When Sweden officially joined NATO in 2024, it wasn't just another flag. It was the formal integration of one of Europe's most unique forces. At the heart of that capability was the Gripen. For years, NATO observed the Gripen. Now it was inside the tent. Its unique philosophy on air power was set to have a profound impact on alliance strategic thinking. First impact, the defense of Northern Europe and the Baltic region. The Gripen is purpose-built for this environment. Its ability to operate from short damaged runways or fortified highways is a game changer. A dispersed fleet across rugged terrain presents an incredibly difficult and resilient target for any aggressor. This dispersed combat model Sweden perfected over decades is a powerful lesson for NATO. Gripen's emphasis on network-centric warfare and superior electronic systems brings a new dimension to NATO combined operations. It can share sensor information seamlessly, a powerful force multiplier. This forces planners to think beyond platform specs and more about the network. As fifth-generation fighters become the norm, their immense operational costs strain defense budgets. The Gripen proves there is another way, capable, advanced, but affordable and sustainable. It challenges more is always better, and champions efficiency. Looking ahead to the future of air power in Europe. The shadow of the Gripen looms large. It represents a paradigm shift, efficiency, adaptability, and smart technology. 
As budgets face pressure and the nature of conflict evolves, the era of designing aircraft without regard for running costs is over. The Gripen E brings more power, fuel, weapons and advanced EW and sensor suites. A revolutionary wide area display gives the pilot unparalleled situational awareness. Designed for a future of manned and unmanned mix, Gripen can act as a quarterback, directing loyal wingman drones for reconnaissance and SEAD. Software-centric design allows rapid adaptation, a single pilot could coordinate many systems. Sweden's Gripen changed everything for NATO, offering a compelling alternative vision. A smaller nation using ingenuity to build world-beating tech, the smartest fighter not the biggest, will rule the skies. Smart design, network-centric thinking, operational efficiency, sustainable power. The little jet from Sweden didn't just join the club, it showed a whole new way to play the game.